Introducing Bell's Future Quantum Mechanics, a novel interpretation. Start with all of space-time. All branches of physics are confined to be in all of space-time. And I'm explicitly rejecting more than three spatial dimensions. I'm explicitly rejecting the multiverse. Newtonian classical physics subtracts away nearly everything in space-time. Time is absolute, space is absolute, they don't rotate into each other, and all of classical physics happens within the widths of the time and the space axes. The study of electromagnetism cre required new types of physics. Einstein introduced relativistic physics, where time can rotate into space. But I want to focus on causality. To change an observer at here now, requires an event from the past light cone. So let's subtract away the non-causal events, the space-like regions of space-time. Now, where am I going to put quantum mechanics on a space-time graph? I don't know that I've ever seen that. Bell's inequality can distinguish between hidden local variable theories and non-local quantum mechanics. Experiments have shown that hidden local variable theories are wrong. Quantum mechanics is non-local. So how are you going to enforce that quantum mechanics is non-local? Well, here's an idea. Let's delete the past light cone where those local variables live, at least when while we're doing quantum mechanics and no other kinds of physics. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to have this wave function that's going to necessarily be space-like separated from the observer at here now. And the wave function, therefore, can't really change here now, like at all, because it's too far away. Quantum mechanics has always been about the odds of an interaction happening to the observer in the future. So the product of the wave function and its conjugate form the odds of an interaction happening to the observer in the future. And that is Bell's future quantum mechanics. Thank you.